Okay, so I made a, this is kind of a half response video that I made for Deconverted Man. Um, I made an actual response to Deconverted Man, but I got a little bit too frustrated in the video, so I don't think I'll post it publicly. If you want to see that more elaborate, more specific response, I can post it to you privately. Uh, but frankly, your video was really exasperating. Um, that's why I didn't really want to post a response. It was really exasperating. Now, um, let's, I can turn this into a conversation that everybody can benefit from. It could be a teachable moment. Yeah, let's have a teachable moment. Okay, so, what happens? When I have what I consider a spiritual experience, if you're an atheist, you can listen to this, okay? I'll try to make this as simple as possible so that it makes sense to you. I disappear into my prayer closet, disappear for two, three hours, and I have what I consider, uh, I have a powerful experience with what I consider the Holy Spirit of God. It happens without exception, it happens all the time, and I can generate that, that, I can generate that almost at will, anytime. I can disappear into my prayer closet, put on a worship tape, and I will have that experience. Okay, I maintain, or I believe firmly, first of all, I believe that that is the Holy Spirit of God, and I believe it 150%. Now, I've offered... In my videos, numerous times, how deconverted man didn't hear this, I don't know, but I've said it thousands of times, that it's entirely possible that that experience is internal and subjective alone. Did you hear me, deconverted man? It's entirely possible that it is internal and subjective alone. I've said that thousands of times. What does that mean? That means you don't have to account for it at all. You say, I'm an atheist, Craig, I don't believe you. Great. You don't, I'm not demanding that you believe me. I'm not asking you to believe me necessarily. Doesn't matter to me one, I've said this before too, it doesn't matter to me one iota what you believe. Why? I'm not you. You say, that's crazy, Craig. There's no way that could be the Holy Spirit of God. Great. Walk away from the table, never listen to me again. Doesn't make any difference to me what you believe. I'm not you. I'm not you. I'm just telling you my experience. I firmly and 150% believe that that is the Holy Spirit of God. Now, if you want to actually come up with a better explanation a mundane explanation in deconverted man's words, go for it. But that explanation has to make sense in the natural. The problem with deconverted man's explanations, they weren't mundane, they were insane. And I have a very elaborate take on that deconverted if you want to hear it. You don't have to. I get a little heated because you're, I really do, because you're, you're, your counterexamples were not mundane, deconverted man. They were insane. There's a really big difference. They weren't more plausible than the Holy Spirit. They were completely and utterly implausible. Just in brief, the three counterexamples he gave, a helmet that I don't own, drugs that I'm not taking, or the best one, you know, a, a, a truck that's driving past my house sending electromagnetic impulses to my brain. Yeah, that was, dude, that was totally exasperating. Honest to God. You, you really didn't think about that video at all. If you're going to make videos you don't think about and you post them, you know, don't insist that I watch them or comment on them because it's, it's totally ridiculous. Um, so, here are the facts. And on the facts, you, me the Christian, and you the atheist, we agree. I am having a powerful, subjective, internal experience that I consider the Holy Spirit of God. We agree on those facts. Correct? We all agree on that those are the facts. What we don't agree on is what is generating experience. I actually think it's something supernatural. You don't. I get that. But I'm not demanding that you believe it's something supernatural. Honest to God, don't care what you make of it. Make of it what you will. I'm just telling you the experience. Now, why am I not demanding that you... you first of all, you don't have to explain it away. That's what deconverted man tried to do. Tried to rationalize it. Rationalize it away. If you're going to try to explain it and account for that experience for something other than supernatural, that's your prerogative. But those explanations have to make more sense. They can't be completely irrational and unreasonable and illogical. They have to make more sense. I'll listen. If you come up with a better explanation, I'll listen. And I'll go, hmm, I'll entertain the possibility. Maybe that's correct. But barring that, I am perfectly content with my experiences. Honest to God, I really am perfectly, I'm perfectly cool with saying that it's God and being who I am and living as a Christian. Perfectly cool with it. Not, not looking to really like rationalize it away or explain it away. Why? I'm doing just fine, thanks. <laughs> Honestly, doing just fine, thanks. Got a nice peaceful life. I'm perfectly content with, my, with, 
with where I'm at in life. And my, my, my Christian walk is a really big part of that. Prior to me having these experiences, prior to me having this, this Christian experience, you know, I was struggling. Not, not, I wasn't completely lost, but I was struggling a little. I was a functional alcoholic. I did a lot of drugs or a decent amount of drugs and uh, smoked three packs of cigarettes a day. Since I've become a Christian, all of that is gone. All of that is completely gone. So, the experience itself is a net positive. I cannot stress this enough. It is a net positive. But let's just say for argument's sake that it is a totally subjective internal experience. There is no reality to God generating the experience in, in, inside of me. Still wouldn't matter. Why? Because the experience is net positive. Totally cool with it. It's doing wonders for me. Thank you very much. At will, I can pretty much generate almost complete peace of mind, complete trust in the omnibenevolence of life itself. If it's not God, then it's life itself. I can almost do that at will. Honestly, takes me about two hours of, con of connecting with worship music, and then I'm usually fine with almost everything in the world. Now, that's usually what Christians mean by faith. We don't mean radical assertion without evidence. That's what some types of Christian mean. You know, the earth is 6,000 year old. How do you know? Radical assertion without evidence. I radically assert it. <laughs> I really, really believe it. Okay, great. Doesn't make it true. But that's not my experience. And I don't want to split hair, hairs over the word faith. Because, you know, the people have, the atheists have done a jujitsu act on the word itself and they've imbued it with voodoo significance. What does that mean? They've kind of, you can, you can imbue a word with toxic significance that doesn't intrinsically mean, that it doesn't intrinsically mean. And that's what they've done with faith. When atheists talk about faith, they mean radical assertion without evidence, superstition, superstition multiplied. That's usually what they mean. And that's the only thing they mean. And they use it as a pejorative. That's not how we in the Christian community use the term. When I say faith, okay, when I connect with what I consider the Holy Spirit of God and I say faith, I mean trust, confidence in the character and the integrity of the being that I say I worship and confidence in the omnibenevolence of that being and life itself. That's what I mean. I don't mean I radically assert that something ridiculous is true. I don't really overshoot the mark. I really don't. I don't make a lot of wild assertions, and I've tried to encourage other Christians to do the same. So far, none of them have listened to me. But one day, a lot of them will listen to me, and they'll become really good apologists. That's the, that's the downfall of Christian apologists. We talk in superlatives. It's the downfall of all religious people. We tend to have a tendency to do that. We talk in superlatives. I don't do that. I'm not making any exaggerated claim for what my faith produces in me. It produces nothing but good. Nothing but net positive. I don't make, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to claim that the earth is 6,000 years old because my faith tells me so. I don't do that. I make some, some adjustments with reality. And when my faith doesn't match reality, I don't, I don't override reality in terms of my faith. I don't think that's a wise thing to do. And I don't do it. So, in the final analysis, what am I saying? There's, I'm not looking for a reason. I'm not looking to rationalize my, my spiritual experiences away. I'm honestly not. And, and I use the word rationalize away because that is the root of the word rationality. That is rationality. That is one way of using the word. You can rationalize yourself out of something. My experiences with Christianity is net positive. My experience with my faith is net positive. Almost round the boards. Almost routine. There's almost no downside that I can think of. And when I say faith, I mean confidence. And what and you're listening to my video, Deconverter Man, so what everybody else says faith means is irrelevant. You're listening to my video. I'm talking about confidence, trust in the omnibenevolence of life itself, and ultimately said, said, you know, ultimately sure. You know, I try to take the God out of a lot of my conversations because I, I recognize that I'm talking to mostly secular people, or at least half, half the people I talk to are atheists. So I'm trying to studiously avoid the zero-sum game that goes on in some of these other conversations. Why? I think it's really unproductive. I think it's a total and complete and utter waste of time. Now, deconverted man is part of why I got exasperated too. You, I tried to, did you hear what I just said? I tried to studiously avoid the zero-sum Christian atheist game that goes on in these other, that other people engage in. 
I'm not interested in that at all. You keep trying to route me back to it. I'm not interested in it. You don't have to believe or accept anything I say ever. I would never demand that you do. So you don't need to make a 20 minute video telling me why I'm wrong and come up with all these idiotic rationalizations that you call mundane. Basically, you called those things mundane and your examples were not mundane, they were insane. So, there you go. That's, that's my Christian experience in a nutshell. In a nutshell. Firmly grounded in reality. If, it, if I ever found that it wasn't grounded in reality and I went into my prayer closet and, you know, I found God telling me to kill John Buck. Kill John. I'd, you know, I'd start to think, hmm, maybe this isn't doing this. Maybe, maybe I should think about this. I should rethink this Christianity thing. But so far, it's been nothing but net positive. Go into my prayer closet. I believe I'm connecting powerfully with the Holy Spirit of God, and it does nothing but good. Nothing but good. I don't come out and try and oppress women or oppress gays, anything like that. So, there you have it, in a nutshell. Not necessarily looking for, not necessarily looking for, you know, 